Coming up on Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. Don't ever let anybody abuse you, but it's a license for use. And it says, this is your body. I'll never hold it against you in a wrong way. I'll never keep it from you. I'll never punish you by by taking it away from you. And I'll never give it to somebody. In other words, I'll never go serve the kids all day long and then not give it to you sexually. For a husband to get the desires out of his wife that he really is looking for, if he'll, you know, do those simple things of emotionally connecting through communication, you know, phone calls, you know, how are you doing, the please and thank yous, let me help you carry those groceries in, get the vacuum cleaner out. Okay, guys, let's go. Big points. (laughs) We're going to talk about the secrets of lifelong passion and sexual intimacy. And I I really love teaching on this topic because there is so much misinformation in the world today. Now, this teaching, I do a lot of different seminars. I do a lot of different teaching on sex and sexual intimacy. And what I love about this teaching now is we're going to spell true. And when we spell true, we're going to establish some core beliefs that are essential now to building a foundation for passion and sexual intimacy. And the first, we're going to start with the T. And the T stands for the Bible is relevant and authoritative in my life and in our marriage. Okay, the Bible is, is true and authoritative. Now, the, the Bible's under attack, and I know this is a, a, under attack in America, and it's under attack in many other countries as well. But understand this, when the devil came into the Garden of Eden, here's the first words he ever spoke to humanity. Has God surely said? Those were his first words. He can't defeat you till he disarms you. And God gave them a word, and if they would have followed that word, they would still be alive on the earth, and they would still be in a perfect marriage and perfect bodies. But he came to them and said, is that word that God gave you really true? And Eve said, oh yeah, it's true. And he says, no, it's not true. God knows that the day that you eat that fruit, you're going to be like him. You're going to be a better person. God's trying to hold you down. He's trying to keep you from something right. There were thousands of trees in the garden that were legal. There was only one that was wrong. And he convinced them that the reason God wouldn't let them eat of that tree was because he was mean and he was trying to keep them down. And they walked over and took that fruit. And he said, you won't die in the day that you eat that fruit. You won't die. He said, God knows you're going to come alive. You're going to know the difference between good and evil. Listen to me. They died. They lost the garden. Everything God gave them was lost. Now, let me me say something. I'm a preacher. I'm all for sin if it works. I mean, I'm not a fuddy-duddy. I wasn't born a preacher. And I've, I've done all those things. I mean, I've done all those things. Okay. It kills people. Sin kills people. So the Bible... The Bible, first of all, tells us how to enjoy sex, like the book of the Song of Solomon. I I probably wouldn't read parts of the book of Solomon Solomon in church, you know. The Bible talks graphically about sex because God created sex, and He's a good God. He created it good. But listen to me. The Bible says certain things are wrong. The Bible says adultery is wrong. The Bible says that, that sex outside of marriage is wrong. It says those things. If you'll stay within the... There are many ways you can enjoy sex. Be creative. Have fun having sex in marriage. That's what God wants for you. He's not a prude. He made it that way. He wants you to enjoy it. But he created a fence around it so that we could enjoy it and not have problems. And I'm telling you, as a marriage counselor and as a person myself, when I talk to couples who have gone on the other side of the fence, it always creates devastation. It always creates harm. I'm all for sin if it worked. But it doesn't work. I'm just, experientially, it doesn't work. So I have to begin by believing this is still true. This is still true. Regardless of what anybody else says, this is still true and authoritative for my life. Now, if you don't believe that, you're going to be open to the, just the torrent of deception that's going on in the world today, especially about the area of sex. So this is the standard now that I'm going to use to decide what's right or wrong. And by the way, all people have sexual issues including me. All of us are imperfect. We all have sexual issues. That's not the issue. So when I'm sitting up here saying certain things are right or wrong, and someone would say, well, well, you're a hypocrite. Listen to me. We all make mistakes sexually, but the difference between a true Christian and a person who isn't is I accept this telling me what's right and wrong. And when I make a mistake, it's a mistake. 
It's wrong. It's against the standard. So I'm imperfect, but I receive this is telling me what the standard is. That's the difference in my opinion. Number two, the R. Reality is much different than secular TV, movies, magazines, and the internet tell me. This, that's not reality. When you're watching TV, when you're watching movies, and it's showing these glamorized views of sexual immorality. You know, one of my objections to movies and television is they don't, they don't show the disease. They don't show the aftermath. They show the sexual immorality, but they don't show you the real life thing that's going on. Now, when you go to the grocery store, you know, one of the things about the grocery store is they have these magazines that always, they always, men's and women's magazines at the grocery store counter, they always have something about sex, always have something about sex. So these are actual uh, things that are on magazines. The first is Cosmopolitan magazine. These are actual front cover lines on magazines from men's and women's magazines at the checkout counter now at the grocery store. This is Cosmopolitan. 50 ways to seduce a man in a minute or less. See, so, you know, you're at the checkout counter, you look over there, 50 ways to seduce a man in a minute or less. Oh, okay. Kinky sex, 64% of you secretly want to try this. Okay. All right. Here, this is, this is one of my favorites here. 57 kinky sex moves to drive your man crazy. Fit, this is on the checkout counter there at the grocery store. 57 kinky sex moves. Do you really need that many? <laughs> uh, three or four is great. <laughs> and let me tell you, I'm kind of the sex guy, and I'm just telling you right now, there are not 57 kinky sex moves. I'm just telling you, they're not. There are 12, and they're in my new book. And I, so... So, okay, here, more, more titles now. More sex, less begging. <laughs> sex for a hundred days, health for life. For you, not necessarily her, but she'll, <laughs> so. And, and you see that stuff, and it's not real. I'm just, it's not real. And, and so you watch movies or you see TV, it's, it's glamorized, it's, it's romanticized. Or on the internet, and there are men leaving their marriages for this internet sex, it's not real. That's not the way real people live their lives, it's just not, that's not real. But you get it in your head, uh, research has proven, I want you to listen to this one, that when men are exposed to three one-hour R-rated movies, it changes the way they view women. Three R-rated, not X-rated. Men begin to objectify women and remove their personalities from them. And so when you believe that, that nonsense that just says there's someone out there and they're having, you know, there's 57, kin I'm, I am missing out on 57 kinky sex moves. Basically, I'm being defrauded of a lot of, I could be a sex genius if it wasn't for that dud I'm married to right there. That's what, that's what it makes you feel like, okay? Well, it's just not real. So you, unmet needs open the door for the devil to attack our marriage. Unmet needs, this is true, okay? This is, this is actual. Listen to 1 Corinthians 7. This is the Apostle Paul. Listen to what he's saying. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Now, here's what this is saying. When we get married, we give our, our body to our spouse. This isn't our body anymore. It's our spouse's body. And so you, you can't get married and then withhold your body from each other, but it's, it's normal thing. People do it to punish each other. People do it for whatever reason. But Paul says here, you don't have authority over your body when you get married. Your spouse does for the right of them having sex and getting their needs met. Well, this goes both ways. So I was on a TV show and there were call, they were taking calls uh, from around the country. I think this woman was from like New England. 
And she said, um, I was telling my husband, you know, that I want sex. And, you know, would you go to the doctor and, and get some help? And she said, my husband said, I'm fine. And she said, and I'm devastated. What he did was, is that he took his body, and he had a, a problem that was, that was treatable. He took his body and said to her, I'm removing this as a, as, an, as a formula in our marriage. And I'm fine with that. You're, but she wasn't. She was devastated. Then I had a man that I counseled. This was several years ago. And I'd known this man for a long time. His wife was a very attractive woman. I mean, he was a, he was a handsome guy. And he, maybe he was like late 30s, early 40s. And he came up to me and said, you know, Jimmy, he said, I'm a healthy male. And he said, I love my wife. I'm very attracted to her. He said, but she told me the other day, she said, your sex needs just stress me out. And I don't want to hear about them anymore. And she checked out. It was because of kids. You know, they had children. And he said, I help around the house. I'm more than happy to help her, but she just checked out. And there may be other issues. On both sides, there may be other issues. But here's what I'm saying. You know, if, if, Karen, if Karen didn't feed me at home, and she never fed me, and I didn't get to eat at home, and before I left the door, she said to me, don't you eat at McDonald's. Don't you dare eat it. Don't you, don't you eat at McDonald's. I'm going to drive by McDonald's, I'm going to smell me a Big Mac, and I'm going to start fantasizing. I said, I know I shouldn't eat there, but it sure smells good. I can see a double Mac right in my brain right now. <laughs> Big Mac. And I'm, even if I don't eat there, I'm going to be tempted because I'm hungry. That's a need that I have. I'm hungry. She's not feeding me. But if Karen feeds me, I don't have to worry about being tempted because all those other smells don't matter because she's got the best food in the world. Dude, there's too much food in the world to let your spouse leave home hungry. You meet each other's needs. Un the, the Apostle Paul says, if you're so spiritual that you're going to fast sex, and it, he's probably talking to women, they're not men. But <laughs> she says, I'm going to go on a 40-day fast, if you don't mind. But he says, with consent. You can't do that without your spouse's consent. With consent, is what he said. Or the devil will come and tempt you. So we have to understand, some people are jealous. Some people are jealous, and they're jealous about their spouse. Meet your spouse's needs, you won't have to be jealous. Honey, are you happy? This is your body, you know. It's not a license for abuse, it's a license for use. Okay, don't let, ever let anybody abuse you. But it's a license for use. And it says, this is your body. I'll never hold it against you in a wrong way. I'll never keep it from you. I'll never punish you by, by taking it away from you. And I'll never give it to somebody. In other words, I'll never go serve the kids all day long and then not give it to you sexually. This is your body first. And I will give it to you. That's the way you make sure sexually that you close the door on the devil in your marriage. That's a, that's a core foundation of sexuality. And E, each of us has what the other needs. If we will serve the other, our marriage will flourish. We can't meet our own needs. If we could meet our own needs, we wouldn't get married. I have what Karen needs, and she has what I need, and it's different. What I need from Karen is different than what she needs from me. And so I'm going to meet her needs. She's going to meet my needs. Now, you may have heard me tell this story before, but let me tell you about the heaven marriage and the hell marriage, because it's not biblically accurate, but it's a good story. Okay. Heaven and hell both have banquet tables, okay? And in heaven and hell, there's just this incredible banquet on the tables. And in heaven and hell, people have utensils on their hands that are strapped there, and they're too long to feed yourself. There's a banquet in front of you, and you can scoop food in front of you, which is just incredible, but you can't feed yourself. And so in heaven, everyone is in heaven at this incredible banquet, and they're scooping up the food and feeding each other across the table. The same exact picture is in hell, but in hell they're so selfish that they'll starve to death before they'll feed each other. I can't meet my own needs. If I could meet my own needs, I wouldn't have gotten married. I married, there are needs that only God can meet. I'm not talking about a dysfunctional relationship where you're asking something for your spouse that they can't give. But there are needs that Karen meets in me that I can't need in myself. In other words, I've got utensils that I can scoop what she needs and feed it to her, but I can't feed it to myself. I need her to feed me, and she needs me to feed her. So a heaven marriage is two servants in love that are unselfish and said, baby, what do you need? You, 
You want some corn? You want some mashed taters? You want some okra? What do you want? Rather than saying, you want corn, open up. You know, like that. I don't want corn today. You know, let me tell you what I need, because I'm different than you. But two servants in love just sit there and say, baby, what do you want? Babe, let me serve you. And you sit there and you feed each other. But in hell, they're so selfish that they'd rather starve to death than meet each other's needs. You have what each other needs. If you'll listen and have a servant heart, you'll, be, you'll flourish in marriage because you both have what the other person needs. I hope you enjoyed that teaching. You know, Lifelong Love Affair is, I believe, one of the most powerful seminars I've ever done because it helps people to understand that, you, first of all, you can have a marriage that lasts for a lifetime. And right now, for your gift of any amount, we want to send you the full CD message that's called The Secret of Lifelong Love. God created marriage to be a marathon, not a sprint, to last the rest of our lives, not to just last for a few weeks or months or years and then be over with, but you can have love that lasts for a lifetime. For your gift of $60 or more, we want to send you the entire four-part Lifelong Love Affair CD series plus the book, Lifelong Love Affair. Now listen, there are things in the seminar that are not in the book and things in the book that are not in the seminar. So you need both of them. That's why we're going to send it to you. And for $90 or more, we'll send you the DVD series, full four-part four DVD series with the book. And a bonus, The Mountaintop of Marriage. This helps you to have a vision retreat, which is transforming all by itself, that will give you skills and tools to have the marriage of your dreams. Again, that lasts for the rest of your life. That gets better and better and better. To know God's vision for your marriage, to have sexual intimacy in your marriage, to be able to understand you know, how to have the marriage of your dreams and really be married to your best friend. We want to get you this information. Here's how you can get it. Transform your marriage into a lifelong love affair. For your gift of $60 or more, we'll send you Jimmy's latest CD series and book. For your gift of $90 or more, we'll send you the DVD series, book, and the Mountaintop of Marriage Vision Retreat Guidebook. In this inspiring series, Jimmy reveals how to stay in love for the rest of your life, how to have vision for your marriage, and how to have God's blessing on your relationship. For your gift of any amount, we'll send you the CD single, The Secret of Lifelong Love. And I'm saying you absolutely can have a marriage that gets better and better and better, and you can have a marriage that lasts for the rest of your life. No matter where your marriage is today, you can have a lifelong love affair. Experience Jimmy's latest series today. program today and we're you know we're talking about true passion and intimacy in marriage sexual intimacy this is a, a big area of marriage and I was talking in the teaching you know just about some of the core values that we have to believe in uh, this is such an important area in our world today people when we meet we naturally do the right thing mm -hmm. and then when we get married we we forget that and I want to talk about just some of the issues when we met and fell in love I did everything right because I was trying to, to gain your affection and you were trying to gain my affection. We did everything right. But within several years after really after meeting each other, but especially after marriage, the wheels fell off. You know, and we were talking the lifelong love affair, we talk about marriage as a marathon, not a sprint. Right. Okay. Many people get into the sprint and even the sexual sprint. Mm -hmm. And it's fantastic and it's wonderful. And the next thing you know, it just, again, the passion wears off, but it goes back to the daily discipline. So mm -hmm. I wanna talk about a few of those things, but the, the first one is, again, sexual passion and intimacy. The passion comes from the daily discipline, first of all, to pursue each other. Yes. Okay. Now, when we date each other, we work hard mm -hmm. at the relationship. But once we've been married for a while, sometimes we get lazy. And this is what happened to us now. I mean, I just got lazy. I stopped pursuing you. And then the, the passion was gone from our relationship. So talk about that from a woman's perspective. Well, I think that to keep passion going, you have to have your heart in it. 
you know, and if, you know, it's, if your heart's not in it, you, it doesn't matter how much you try to be passionate, it's going to show. That's right. You know, and so I think that it's so important, you know, to, you know, make sure that you're, you're, you're checking your heart, you know, do I have anything, um, that's in between us right now. You know, am I am I upset with you about something? Are you are you too busy with work, or your heart's being divided? Right. You know, and it's no longer full of the the things that were used to be so important. Like you're saying, dating. Right. You know, the reason it was so passionate is because you know we hated school, so the best thing was having a date and seeing each other. <laughs> that's right. You know, or calling each other on the phone. And so, um, you know, it, I think it's a lot about you know what where is your heart? You know, is it to make yourself successful in business? Is it to be a great parent? Is it to, you know... I and mean, all those things are fine. Yeah. yeah. But if it's if marriage is not first, and if, you're, if your love for each other is not first, and your passion mm -hmm. is going to follow that. And so, you know, I think it's a heart issue first. And then yeah. I think it is just, just the disciplines that you're talking about. I mean, it's like you've said before, having a date night is so important. It's one of right. the most key important things to do, especially in a busy society that we live in, right. is make that a priority. If nothing else, have a date night. And, um, and, you know, and then praying together. I think praying together is one of the deepest, most intimate things you can do in a marriage because it keeps you it does. Um, connected not only um, spiritually, but it just brings God back into the picture where, you know, some of the stuff that you've been dealing with kind of has a way of just going away. Well, one of the number one problems that people have sexually is stress. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the issues that keep them from enjoying sex. But here's my point is whenever I'm giving the best to you, this is what happens when we date. I'm giving the best to you. I'm investing the best in you. And then what happens is I'm passionate mm -hmm. because you're, you're my treasure. You're where I'm putting the best of my life. My passion nat naturally gravitates there. Then once we've been married for a while, and it kind of gets old and mundane and we get lazy, I start giving the best to the kids mm -hmm. or the best at work or the best somewhere else. And the next thing you know, we don't have passion in our relationship and we're thinking, well, there must be something wrong. Well, mm -hmm. we need to try something new to get the, no, actually don't try something new. Just did what you did in the very beginning and that is focus on each other mm -hmm. and make sure that the, that the relationship comes first. And when you're talking about praying, Karen, we're talking about making God first, mm -hmm. keeping God first in our relationship, making sure that we're first in each other's lives and that that is just inviolable. Mm -hmm. That is the cornerstone of the relationship. And see on that foundation then, you experience sexual intimacy. Every couple can experience intimacy and sexual intimacy for a lifetime, but it doesn't just happen because you know you, you get in bed and you're doing everything right in bed. It happens because you're doing everything right out of bed. And there are some things sexually that are in the teaching, in the fuller resource there, that I hope you'll get. But I hope that this is an encouragement to you because this is a big deal. And it's a big area of marriage that God wants us to succeed in. You know, we have, we're able to come to you because we have a special group of partners that stand with us financially every single month. We call them our rock solid partners. Really, they are the backbone of our ministry financially. And just every single month they give to support us to send us back to you every single day and every single week but also across America and around the world to keep little children together with their parents, to help couples avoid divorce and experience the marriage of their dreams, but also to give people the skills and tools they need to succeed in marriage. Such an important thing. We're asking you if you would become a partner with us and here's how you can do it. When you stand with Marriage Today, your individual effort multiplies with other like-minded partners and together we can rebuild the dream of marriage for couples around the world. Being a rock-solid partner with Marriage Today grants you immediate access to an exclusive library of the ministry's resources and intimately connects you with our mission of helping couples succeed in marriage. And that's really why we became Rock Solid Partners, just because there was so much available to help us to help other marriages heal the way that, the way that we have. That's why we're tied into the ministry. We want to be able to bless and give so they can keep doing what they're doing. You're guaranteed if you listen to any of the resources, you read the resources, you come to a conference, you will be changed. Everyone has something to give. And there are millions of unreached couples who desperately need the marriage strengthening resources of marriage today. That's why we need you to join us. Become a rock solid partner with the ministry and mission of marriage today. Welcome back. 
You know, marriage is a, a wonderful blessing for all of us, but one of the main reasons that people get married is sexual intimacy and, and also sexual exclusivity is in marriage, you know, sex is the only unique feature of marriage. And when we enjoy that with our spouse in marriage, and that is something that, you know, it, it's the only unique feature. And if, if it's something that we're enjoying and something that we're successful at, it is so wonderful, but so many people who get divorced, get divorced because of sex. So this is a two-edged sword. It can be a tremendous blessing, but it can also bring some, be something that brings a lot of pain and division in our relationship. And Karen, we're talking about when the passion of a relationship and the sexual intimacy of a relationship suffer, it's always because we just stop being mannerly. Mm -hmm. A lot of people treat strangers better than they treat their spouse, mm -hmm. and they're more mannerly. Now, when we got married, you know, I was I was Mr. Wonderful when we first got well first met. I'm talking about started dating. I was going to say, and yeah, I was I was, <laughs> I I was not as good when we got married. But when we got married, I was a jerk. I mean, I was ill mannered, and I took you for granted. But I remember how well mannered I was, and and manners means respecting a person. That's mm -hmm. all manners mean. Mm -hmm. It means I respect you. The lack of manners means I don't respect. Well, I think you. a woman just appreciates a husband that you know communicates in clear words and not just, uh, 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 uh. you know, it's like, thank you. And, uh, yeah. can I help you? Or, you know, not just the grunts that, you know, that, cause I, I think that's, that, that's what you're saying about manners, but also on the same side of that is I think for a woman, we like to feel emotionally connected, you know, and I think it's just so important for a man to emotionally connect with her wife, you know, throughout the day. And that's one of the good things that you do for us is that, you know, you're so good about calling and checking on me and, and um, always communicating and, um, you know, and I think that, you know, for a husband to get the desires out of his wife that he really is looking for, if he'll, you know, do those simple things of emotionally connecting through communication, you know, phone calls, you know, how are you doing, That's the right. please and thank yous, let me help you carry those groceries in, I'm get the vacuum cleaner out. Okay, guys, point, let's go. Big points. <laughs> big points. Well, you know, honestly and truly, the, the misinformation that goes on sexually, and, and I, I was guilty of this, Karen. I mean, I, I had all these thoughts were in my mind. It's, it's kind of like it doesn't matter what happens outside the bedroom. Mm -hmm. It's what's in the bedroom that makes great sex. It's the opposite. Mm -hmm. What happens outside the bedroom creates the at the the excitement and the passion for what then can happen inside the bedroom and when you're when you're not respecting your spouse when when you're not mannerly of you fall in love because you say please thank you you're courteous you're helpful you're sensitive to the other person and you fall out of love because you become insensitive and ill-mannered well, we hope that this program today has been a blessing to you we want you to know that God created sex God created sex in marriage to be something that is a pleasure for the rest of our lives. And we hope that this program helps you to achieve the sexual pleasure and intimacy that you desire. We'll see you next time right here on Marriage Today. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today. Support Marriage Today with your best gift and receive the series Lifelong Love Affair. Don't miss the EXO Houston Marriage Conference with Jimmy and Karen Evans, July 10th and 11th at Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. Register online at exohouston.com. Start a path to emotional health and healing with daily videos, devotionals, and personal challenges from Jimmy Evans. Available now at 21dayjourney.com. Become a rock solid partner today and connect with the mission of marriage today. Together, we can help couples succeed in marriage. This program is made possible by the generous support of our faithful partners.